Mr. Bernanke goes to Capitol Hill and Marissa Mayer wraps up her first year at Yahoo. Investor Beat starts now. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hill. The Fed chief kicked off two days of congressional testimony by reiterating the tapering of the QE program will occur as economic conditions permit. The Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ all held steady, so I think we're all okay for the moment. Joining me in studio today, Jason Moser and Matt Argusinger. Guys, our top story, Yahoo's second quarter earnings rose 46%, but the company missed on revenue as advertising was hit. Uh, Kind of a mixed bag of earnings, but shares rising today as a result. What do you think of the news? Well, yeah, it's surprising that the shares are up so much given that revenue was down because digital advertising spend over the last year is up 15%. The Yahoo's showing lower revenue. But again, I, I think revenue and earnings are just the wrong things to focus on right now with Yahoo. I mean, Marissa Meyer is working really hard to make Yahoo more relevant. She's made 17 acquisitions over the past year, including the big one, Tumblr. Uh, she's worried about making the, the sites more friendly, more, you know, more satisfying, more uh, you know, creative. And so it's just... Those things have to play out, and I think the market's giving her kind of a wide lead to do that. Uh, today is the one-year anniversary of her taking over as CEO. Uh, I don't think there's anyone out there who doesn't think she's done a great job in her rookie year. Now her sophomore year begins, so um, it, it's it's just got to get tougher from here, doesn't it? You just made me think of the sophomore slump, right? I mean, I don't want to say that. <laughs> I'm Happy not looking at jinx her. Happy anniversary, Marissa. I mean, that's just a great job the first uh, the first year here. I, I see this kind of from both sides. I mean, on the one side of the coin, she's doing the right things to change the culture, turn the company around. I like the strategy, the chain reaction of hiring the people to develop the content, to sell the ad revenue, to take it down to the bottom line. I think the market is giving her a little bit more time. But as Matty said, you know, there was 15% rise in digital spending. There, Yahoo actually lost a little bit of market share. So that's a little, a little concerning. But I'm willing to give her a little bit more time, too. I like the steps she's taking. I think Yahoo's still a very interesting story and very relevant in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, the company has gained $10 billion of market cap in the year that she's been on the job. Uh, what do you think of the stock right now, though? It's had an incredible run. But, you know, when I look at the numbers and I see that Yahoo, you know, 192 million unique visits in May, that's only slightly below Google and much higher than sites like that Microsoft and, and Facebook own. Yet the stock, even, even as it is right now, it's a $30 billion market value. It's a tenth the size of Google. I think there's upside here, especially if Marissa Meyer continues to execute. So I almost think it's a buy right here. All right, let's get to some of the day's movers and shakers. Mattel's second quarter profits fell 24%. It was the fourth consecutive quarter of declining sales for Barbie. And when we're talking Mattel, I mean, Barbie's big here. Yeah, we'll, we'll get together after this and we'll talk Monster High. But yeah, I think Barbie is the concerning one. I still think the cage match, American Girl and Barbie, you do that, creates a little buzz going into the holiday season. Nice. I don't know. You know, it's it's Hot Wheels, it's it's Monster High, it's Barbie. It, it, they're having some good some good times and some bad times over those toys. I think the thing is with Mattel and with toys in general, it's a tremendous market. But toys in general, their lifespans are getting very short, uh, shortening certainly from when we were kids playing with toys because of technology. And so I think companies like Mattel are going to have to really step in there, a la Disney and Pixar, and figure out ways to stretch the lifespan of these franchises out. And they're doing that by books and videos and whatnot. It's just going to take a little time. But yeah, I think, I think that today actually with the, with the sell-off, Mattel's worth a look. All right, Bank of America's second quarter profit rose 63%, improved income from trading, investment banking, and lending all helping, but B of A is still cleaning up the mess from the countrywide situation. Uh, stock at a two-year high, though. It is, and, you know, we joked earlier that, you know, 2025, they'll probably still be dealing with the countrywide <laughs> hangover. But, you know, truth be told, it, it, you know, the mortgage business isn't doing very well. Interest rates are going up. That's going to hurt refinancings, which has been about 80% of Bank of America's mortgage, mortgage business uh, so far this year. You know, and at the same time, though, they're writing a lot of mortgages, and the mortgages they're writing today are probably going to be better and work out for the company long term. So, stocks at a two-year high. Buffett is still a fan of the, the company we know, so there are worse places to be if you're interested in betting on the banks. Damning with faint praise. <laughs> Google could be joining the battle for the living room. The company has reportedly approached media companies to license their content for an online pay TV service. Uh, it seems like cable TV is ripe for disruption. Do you think Google can pull it off? Well, I think that certainly Google has a shot at it. I mean, it's the TV is the next big frontier, right? And we've seen it with Apple and with Amazon and with Google. They're trying to get in there and figure out ways to give us offerings without tethering 
bring us to this tremendous package of channels that we don't watch. I think that it's just a matter of time before cable is disrupted. I think that companies like Google and Amazon and Apple are the ones that are going to do it because they have the deepest pockets and the smartest minds. I think that Google is a stock that you can buy today, you can buy it tomorrow. It's one that you just want to hang on to probably forever. <laughs> And finally, Yandex on the rise today. The Google of Russia just hit a new 52-week high with quarterly earnings coming up soon. What do you think? Hey, this is all about respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T <laughs> when it comes to Yandex. You know, they've held on to that 60% share of Russian search. Google's been trying to eat into that for years. They just can't. And I think the market's finally waking up and realizing that and saying, hey, Yandex is here to stay. Uh, plus, the revenue's up 35% year over year. They raised the revenue guidance last quarter. They report next week. I'm expecting they might actually raise it again. So I'm not surprised the stock's at a 52-week high. At a $10 billion market cap and, you know, the most dominant search engine in Russia, which we know is a kind of a, a, an exciting, growing, emerging market, at least for the next 10 years, I, I like Yandex right here. All right, that's going to do it for Wednesday. Let's look ahead to the rest of the week. Jason, what's the stock you've got in your radar? You like paint, Chris? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Exactly right. Sherwin-Williams, they have earnings coming out tomorrow. I think this is amazing what this company has done. Stock's up 240% over the last five years, just killing the market. Matty was talking earlier about refinancing, kind of whittling back, and I think that's right. And I think with that, we're going to see a lot of people staying put. Painting projects abound, I'm sure. We're going to have a lot of them. I think there's still a lot of room for this company to run. Uh, just, just a tremendous uh, painting store segment that's responsible for 65% of their operating income. And so I think we're going to really see that play out over the next five years. All right, Manny, what about you? Athena Health, ticker ATHN. You know, this is a big cloud services provider of electronic medical records, which we know is one of the mandates of Obamacare. So they're big into that. Uh, they also just recently signed a deal with a, with a big hospital group that's going to bring them a lot of, um, maybe expand their customer base by at least 10%. Stocks firing on all cylinders. As a growth guy, I like to see that. And so um, I'm interested in they report earnings tomorrow. All right. For Jason Moser and Matt Argusinger, I'm Chris Hill. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. People on the show may have interest in the stocks they talk about, and The Motley Fool may have formal